So in the past video, we completed building the form. We got a house into our database and it redirected us to this page, slash houses slash one. So in, the, in this video, what we're trying to do is basically query the details about that house and display them on the field, on the, on the page, sorry. So this all happens within pages, houses, ID, index. ID being a dynamic placeholder for this one that's coming up here. So this is where we're going to be querying the data, but let's go build the backend first because right now we have nothing to query. We haven't actually added a query yet to load a house. So that's all gonna take place in schema house. And in here, we're going to go to this house resolver and we can put it above the mutation or below, it doesn't really matter, but we're going to define a, a query. So for this, we're going to create a function called async house. And what this is going to do is take in an arg um, called the ID, basically the house that we're trying to load. So it's gonna be a variable ID and the TypeScript type will be string. And we also want the context because without the context, we can't access the database. So we sort of need that. Um, we used authorized context here because we were using the authorized decorator. In this case, we don't need it because anyone can load a house. You don't have to be authorized. So we're gonna come here, but before we fill in the function body, let's just add the, uh, the query decorator to this function. So this is query, the return type. So returns is going to be a house. And this is the exact same house that we created uh, previously for the return from our mutation. And what we can say here is nullable true, because what happens if you visit house two, which doesn't yet exist? Of course, it's gonna return null because there's nothing to load. So what we're going to return here is basically a query using Prisma to the database to try to load the correct house. So we already have the context, which has Prisma on it. And here we can access the house table and we can use the find one function, which is for finding one house. So we're gonna pass in where the ID is equal to the ID. Now here we get a type error because this is coming up to us as a string and the database, uh, it knows the ID column in it is a number. So we just have to parse this. So parse int 10 to convert that into a number. So with this query in place, we should be able to go and query a house. Uh, we can test that by just going to the playground. We'll refresh, make sure that the, uh, let's look at the docs instead actually. So now we have a house query where it takes in an ID as a string and it will turn us this. So we can try that out. We can ask for a house with ID one. We can ask, um, for it back the ID. So it will query, give us that. We can also ask for all the other fields it has, like the image, the bedrooms, etc. Query those. So we get this, the bedrooms. So what happens if we passed up two? This is when it would return null because there's no house two yet. So we're gonna go into the front end now and we're gonna load up the page that I had open previously. So the show house page. And in here, for now, we are going to uncomment this use query GQL. We will also get access to the image and we'll just go uncommenting these as we need them. Like I know we need the layout for sure. Um, so yeah, if, if we don't uncomment, it will give us an error anyway, so it's not a huge deal. So we're building the show house query, which is GQL and we're gonna write this query. So it's a query and the name we're gonna give it is show house query, basically same thing. It's going to receive a variable of ID, which is type of a required string. And so now let's do the actual query. So we want to pass in the ID field with the value from the ID variable. And what we want back are ID, user ID, address, oops, the public ID, which is the image, the cloudinary image bedrooms, latitude, and longitude. So that's the, the info we need to show all the details about this house. Let's go to the uh, console and let's just say yarn code gen. 
because that's going to generate us the types for this query that we just wrote. So we can go back here and that should allow us to uncomment this because it's now um, in here and generated. Cool. So inside of this show house component, what are we trying to do first? Well, in order to query the house, we first need to get the ID of the house and that comes from the router. So make sure you've uncommented the use router hook and we're going to come into here and we're going to say const something equals use router like that. So from use router, we can ask for the query params, the ones that um, show up here. It, it could be the question mark ones, but it also includes the dynamic IDs as query parameters. And specifically, we want the ID. So with the ID, we basically want to check, make sure it has a value. So let's just say if ID, if not ID, we're going to return null. Um, can't really display anything yet. So why would you ever get a null ID on this page? It happens to do with the way Next.js works. Um, it's going to generate this page statically and um, for, for speed purposes and whatnot. And so the first time the user visits this, it's actually going to render this show house page without any, it's going to show like the static version of the page. So the router will not have um, initialized yet. So there won't be any IDs. Then it's going to initialize itself and re-render and that time it will give us an ID. So what we can do below here is just, why don't we create another just inline component down below here that will render the house once we have the ID. So we'll call it house data and we'll pass it the ID like this. Now what value is ID? We're sure at this point it's it's defined because otherwise it would have returned here. But see, it could be a string or an array of strings. Uh, we know it's it's just one string, so let's change that type here. So now it's time to go and declare this house data component. So we're going to create house data, and because we just return, we just receive one prop, the ID. We can just keep things simple and declare the interface in line. So it's going to receive an ID as a string just like that. And um, so right now we haven't returned anything, so it's failing. So we want to return something, but first we want to execute the query. We want to try to load the house, this query that we created above. So to do that, we are going to say const something is equal to use query. So this would be the show house query like that. And we're going to give it the type information so we can just copy and paste these two interfaces we imported for the return value and the variables type. And what this is going to give us is data and a loading state. There are other ones if you want to check for an error and stuff like that, but uh, we're not going to use those right now. So how, which house would this load? It would actually fail right now because the show house query requires an ID passed to it. So we need to make sure to say, we're going to pass you some variables. What variable are we going to pass you? The ID. So that should keep TypeScript happy. So we're going to do some checks now. And we're going to say if loading or there's no data yet, we're going to return the layout. It feels like it's been a while since we've used the layout. And here we're just going to do a main and we're just going to show a div that says loading dot dot dot. So you could have a nice spinner if you want to. It's totally up to you. So at this point, if uh, we do have data, but the data has no house, this means it, it finished the query. There's data, but it wasn't able to load anything. So at this point, we're going to do another layout. And we're just going to say the main will be a div that says unable to load house. And you could even put in the ID of the house it couldn't load. So now we've handled the two cases where we don't have data yet. So below here, we know we have the data. So we could, um, why don't we just make it easier for ourselves? So we'll take the house and put it into a variable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return the layout with a main 
For now, I'm just going to put a div in here. And in the div, I'm going to put a pre that outputs the content of house. So json.stringify the house, null two. Um, we're going to get rid of the pre, but this is just to make sure that it's working correctly. So we'll come back to the web and already it's fast refreshed in the background. And we can see that we have all of the data that we've asked the backend for. So if I were to refresh, you see it's loading for a second as it's making that request to the back end. Sometimes it's so fast you can't even really see it. And then we get this house. So now it's time to make the house look nice. So what we're going to do is go up to this div here, add a couple classes to it. So we're going to say when it's uh, small, we're going to make it a block. But when it's medium, we're going to make it display of flex because we're going to have sort of two panels side by side. So in here we have the two panels. So the first one and the second one. Um, why don't we do the second one first? Because right now we're not really going to fill it in. So it's just eventually going to have something called the single map. Let's give it the class names. So on a small screen, it will be full width. And on a medium screen, it will be width of um, width of one slash two. There we go. So the other one will be very similar. Class name. It's going to be a uh, small with full, medium with, man, having some trouble with that, half. We're also going to give it a little bit of padding just so that it looks nicer. And now inside of this div, we're going to add some details. So first we'll add the H1. This will be the house address. We'll give it some classes through Tailwind. So this is going to be some, some big text, 3XL, and we're going to give it some margin y so some vertical margin of two let's verify so there we got 50 broadway orangeville it's starting to show up come back here so below the h1 we're going to show an image and we're going to use a component um, that we haven't seen yet in this app i don't believe and that's the image component from cloudinary react so it's a special image component next.js has its own image component now but um, the cloudinary one gives you a lot of properties that are specific to Cloudinary, so like dynamic resizing and stuff like that. So we're going to stick with it. So image first, and now we start to add a ton of props. So class name, um, let's give it some padding bottom. We need to tell it what cloud name it's going to be loading this image from. So this is why I put this into a, an environment variable instead of hard coding it before. So next public cloudinary cloud name, next one. We need to give it the public ID of the image. So this is the house.public ID. What's the alt text for this? Well, maybe we just show the address that um, the address for the house if it can't load the image. We definitely want to load this secure. Um, DPR of auto, DPR is sort of, I think it's like the pixel depth or something like that. It's like, depending on the type of screen you're using, like if it's an iPhone or an old phone or a computer, it will load bigger images so it looks better on retina screens or not. Quality, we'll keep it at auto. And finally, we're gonna get down to the width. So we're gonna code this at 900 pixels. It will grow and shrink a little bit. And then we'll give it a, a height. So we want the nine by 16 ratio. So what we're going to do is we're going to just math.floor to do some rounding down. And then we'll say it's 9 divided by 16 in parentheses times the width of 900 so that it will just calculate the height for us. We're going to do crop fill and gravity auto. So basically, if the image doesn't fit perfectly into the space we've set up for it, Cloudinary is going to crop it for us. And when it crops us, when it crops the image, gravity auto means it's going to try to detect the area of the image with, that looks sort of the most interesting, that has the most going on, and it's going to show that part. So come back, wait for it to refresh. Hopefully, there we go. Because it's dynamically generating that image size for the first time, it takes a sec. Every other page load, it should be a lot quicker, as you could see here. And it is responsive, so there's no need to worry about that. 
Okay, so below the image we're going to put a P and we're just going to put the number of bedrooms. So house.bedrooms and I'm going to do on a Mac control command space to bring up uh, my emoji picker and then we're going to say house. So like a three bedroom house sort of thing. There we go. So this was a two bedroom house. So this is all this page has. Um, if this were a larger app, you could keep on adding more functionality. Um, maybe there's reviews, maybe there's whatever, maybe price history, who knows what your app is. But for now, this is what we're going to have. I think in the next video, we're going to build a, a map that shows where this house is located. And we're going to eventually show some nearby houses to it. So we're going to show other houses that are in a 15 kilometer radius. But this is all I wanted to accomplish in this video. All right, let's move on.